guys, it's Kelly here and I'm in my studio and today for the first lesson I'm going to be showing you how to paint this copper pot. So I'll have a photograph of that as well for you as well as a list of the paints that I'm going to use and materials so make sure that you check out the description for those items. Okay, so let's get started with our lesson. Okay, so I've already got some of my background blocked in, um, and I'll just tell you right quick that the colors on that were ivory black, raw umber, and a little bit of white and yellow. Um, so what is the light shape of the copper as well as the, the shadow shape? So I have the drawing in place right now, and my light is coming from up above the uh, top left corner. So I've got that set up. Um, so that means that all of my shadows are going to be on the right hand side. The angle of the light is telling me that uh, the left hand side and the majority of the left first starting left edge to about here is in light. So I would say, you know, two thirds to three quarters of the form is in light. So that's the first thing to identify. And I also have on the inside, anything that's in like an open bowl or a plate or the opening of a vase, the light and shadow pattern reverses so you have shadow that is actually a cast shadow uh, being cast on the inside of the pot from the left hand side here to about here and it's about the same proportion or ratio usually so double double check that when you're putting that in you always want a good amount of consistency there so now colors um you know obviously if you compare brass to copper to silver, let's say, every metal has sort of its own uh, local color or sense of local color to it. So um, copper is obviously in the reds and the orange is sort of a red-orange color. And this particular copper pot also has some of this sort of verdigris type color on it just from age and wear. And also some of the metal, the silvery metal is shimmering through in places underneath. So I really love that about this particular copper pot because um, it gives you cool and warm on the same object, which is always really, really enticing to look at. So colors that I'm gonna be using um, would be raw sienna. To me, straight out, out of the tube, that's almost the exact color of the pot. And I'm probably not going to be using too much of these cadmiums except for in the highlights, highlight areas, we'll see. But my, um, I'm going to be primarily using this raw sienna. And I have terra rosa here, which is a really um, intense, you know, earth red. And it's also fully opaque. So it's not going to be quite as pink, pinky as, say, the um, cab red light would be. We'll just put a little bit of white in there to perhaps illustrate that. So cab red light, you know, you might think of kind of like candy cane red, and then terra rosa might be more, you know, like a terracotta type color. And so then especially, you know, these two put together get really, really earthy feeling. Um, and then I have transparent red oxide. Uh, simply because these two colors are so opaque that the transparent red oxide is really going to be nice to give me some translucency. And that's what I um, essentially blocked so, in. So, um, the first thing to do, I always say, is paint the shadows first. And I'm just going to put some transparent red oxide in there right now. Just plain. And, you know, not super solid and thick. Um, but just, you know, it's dark enough that it can read a shadow and warm and transparent enough. I also look at the, this particular pot as far as the drawing has a little curve. Then I want to kind of figure out, um, 
you know, what would be, say, sort of the base local color of the actual copper. And this is one area that does tend to throw people off a lot because um, they will perhaps make it way too orangey or way too light in value. And the key with metal is that your highlight is generally the lightest light on the object. Um, and the reason why it looks so bright and light is because the rest of the metal is not quite, I'm gonna add some more red oxide in here, is not quite as light in value. So it looks a lot, you know, different. Uh, it really has that shine and brightness because the color that it's surrounded by is somewhat, you know, duller and darker in comparison. So that would be the first thing is not to start, you do want some co value contrast between your light shape and your shadow shape, but I would be careful not to start it off, especially without too much white. I don't have any white in here at all. So I'm starting off a little bit closer in value to that um, value of the shadow. Um, and I'm also not trying, I'm trying not to make it super, super bright orange. <laughs> so that also is a factor with metal because usually you'll get more high intensity color, I would say through the highlight or through reflected lights on metal. Um, so then I would want to, you know, build up from there. Now, the other thing is that um, some of that surrounding background color is going to start influencing. And I also chose complementary colors in this case, or even like the background color, just sort of a neutral gray as a perfect desaturator color for the copper. So as you can see, I can just add that into my mixture I was using and start to temper some of this uh, orange. So if you do get it too orange um, or too intense, go ahead and just grab a neutralizer. Could be an umber, um, could be, you know, if you have a cooler background color, um, go ahead and just kind of mix that in with that color. With your, as I mentioned before, one of the defining characteristics is that metal overall is a darker value. You know, the, even the light on it is somewhat darker value. And it has this really high intensity, um, high key highlight on it. So that would be one defining characteristic of metal. So I'm going to use some of that um, cadmium yellow deep there to create the highlight with quite a bit of white. And I am using a titanium white for the, the highlights. I do like to get this on right away because then I, what I start to do is I work my way back. So we have several highlights here because of the little ridges. You know, we've got these little ledges, um, forged ledges on the copper. And then on the back inside, a little bit of highlight too. And the way that I'm, you know, loading that brut or that palette knife in this case, and I do like to use a palette knife for these sorts of things because you get more of an intense look to that paint quality um, to where it doesn't, it's, it's not, this all looks more blended in, right? So this kind of sits on top of the surface, a little and flex of green, and that would be another defining characteristic about metal is that it picks up influences from its neighbors. So it's a it's got its own identity, but it's also a little bit of a chameleon in that it starts to take on whatever uh, colors are surrounding it or even values. So in order to get the sensation that this is a highly 
reflective object, you have to start looking for those reflections. You know, the colors, uh, maybe in this case, the green of the cloth shining back through it, or sort of this cool background grayish stuff. You know, this is actually the verdigris right here. It's not a reflection, it's actually a coloration change on the copper itself. Just so happens that I chose a background color that would be nice and harmonious with that. So that's got the phthalo green cool uh, with um, with a little bit of the raw sienna and the white added in and the way that um, the light is moving across the form. So the highlight area is the part of the form that's getting the most amount of light. So there's going to be a little trail of light that sort of connects all the way down the cylinder of the, of the copper. Um, and so I want to take this color, you know, that base color that I had, and start to lighten it a little bit and get it a little more chromatic, you know, or more, uh, more high intensity color. So that's where I might start to add in a little bit more of the cad yellow deep in with that um, sort of terra, terra rosa color. And if I'm, if I'm fluting this side and fluting this side, the shadow, as far as the drawing goes, the shadow fluting is going to go with this side of the contour and this highlight, the drawing of the highlight passage is going to be synonymous with this side of the contour. So I'll just start building up little pieces of light. These don't come quite as, quite as um, strong of a highlight as um, the actual really super strong highlights do, but I do need to get them you know, a little bit lighter and lighter. So, and as you can see, I've kind of started with this darker, and then on this side has got the uh, uh, shadow mixture, or the background mixture added in. So it goes from most neutral to, you know, at most neutral and dark to, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, warmer, 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 and lighter as we get around. And I also like to create more specific brush strokes where something is getting more light looking or more reflective. It, it, in this case, it also goes with the texture of the copper pot. This is really the fun part. I love this. I love doing this. So, But, you know, you wouldn't want texture just everywhere. And then I can also really look at the gradation of the, the color and the slight value changes as that cylinder is starting to wrap around and turn away from the light. So this part of the form, let's say, is in full light on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, you know, it's not quite in shadow yet, but it's getting a little bit less light. So again, I'm going to start, you know, just gradating that value a little bit darker and perhaps taking out even more of the color. So the entire um, copper does not have to be high intensity reds and oranges in order to get the illusion of copper. Little rim lights here, you know, just little ledges of light because these are little top planes and they are catching a little bit of light. So I'm gonna go a little bit lighter, but again, I've got to really use um, a subtle control in the value shift so that it doesn't start to compete too much with that highlight. So I try to, when I put in the highlight, I try to make sure that, um, that then I pull everything else up to support that. 
So after you put in that local color, then go straight to your highlight and kind of try to work your way in between. Drawing a little bit here, um, bringing back some crisper edges, uh, redefining that shadow shape. You'll notice too, sometimes the way that you do a brush stroke might pull, uh, look like it's catching a lot of light and getting a lot of glare. You do want to, you know, make sure that you either change the angle of the brush or come back with, you know, a nice soft haired brush in order to get rid of glare, especially in shadows. Um, you don't want any of that color really reflecting light back to the viewer's eye. You want it to just disappear. So if it's showing up too much, then you know you know that there's a problem there <laughs> with shadows if they're showing up too much. So the other thing is that, you know, light hits something and if it is a, let's say an intense color or something that is really reflected, some of its color is going to also reflect into a surrounding area. So I might start to put in, you know, some of this influence of the orange here. And it makes sense to do it more around the area that's really bouncing all of that light um, than to say all over or say back here in the back. So a little bit of that uh, color reflecting on the tabletop. And then also just kind of helps keep the flow of light moving so to speak through the the object. The other thing you do have to kind of watch out for is that these starting edges that's not quite the right color that these starting edges um, don't get too soft so especially like with metal it's such a hard object you want to go back in and, and perhaps reinforce uh, that harder edge. Now this down here is picking up a darker reflection from the cloth. So it won't go, you know, super, super dark, but some of that green from the cloth and just a little bit darker there. Okay. And then I could also start to Let's say build a little more light on the cloth itself. Sometimes it's not it's not the value that you of the thing that you're painting that needs to be changed to change the look. It's perhaps what's around it. So if I look at this starting edge of the copper in the setup. There, the uh, value of the light on the tabletop plane is much, much lighter than the value on the copper. And again, that just reinforces that sensation that um, that metal is a darker valued object. So, and I'll also put a little more backlight here, back behind, and that will help sharpen up that edge a little bit more too. And perhaps it also uh, helps to define that shadow shape on the cloth a little more as well. On reflected lights, let's talk about that because reflected lights, you wanna make sure that you don't get it as um, let's say high, high value, light, light as light of a value as say what you have in the light. Uh, that's another. I'm just feeling like this looks a little too cluttered up, too many broken values in this cloth. So, you know, I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. And that will also give me more value contrast in the entire, in the entire painting. I 
again, going with that path of light here, and then I'm going to check and see where we're at on time, but sometimes even, you know, right here where that highlight is, you want to uh, perhaps not have as dark of a line of cast shadow there, so you just kind of want to maybe tap in a little bit of that uh, cadmium or um, the terra rosa to kind of uh, get rid of that. Okay, and I think that is going to do it, you guys. Um, good luck to you. You know, one last thing just before we go is maybe to have a little fun getting more texture in here. Um, they Rembrandt did this a lot called Scraffito, um, but hopefully that should give you some good basics on painting copper. Um, and I just thought at the very last minute I might see if I could get a little more uh, high intensity look to this highlight down here. When I stepped back it just looked a little bit weak so I'm going to throw in more of that cad red in the highlight with the cad yellow light just to get a little different mixture there and also build a little more uh, texture onto that copper. Okay, and then, you know, you can sign it and be done. Okay, everybody, happy painting to you. I hope that um, you're having a very inspiring week and getting lots of time at the easel or enough time at the easel um, to feed your creative, uh, your little creative hearts. And I will see you next time.